y'all, welcome back to Red at the Wire. Well, as part of our Daily Stakes play, we're going to be looking at Thursday's card and the Glens Falls, which is a grade two stakes race. So let's take a look at it. The Glens Falls is a grade two run on the inner turf in a mile and a half for four-year-olds and up fillies and mares. And it's important to note the configuration here. We're going to start on the back stretch, and this will be a three-turn race. So uh, just to keep that in mind. Number one is Warlike Goddess, uh, back to her preferred distance. Uh, she's lights out at a mile and a half, six first, one third, uh, and that was in the Breeders' Cup turf, so we can kind of give her a pass on that. Uh, I fully expect that she will rebound from the New York uh, last time. That was at a mile and a quarter. It's just not a distance that she tends to like, and there wasn't, uh, the pace was pretty soft, and so uh, she was at, there were a couple of disadvantages there. But uh, you'd have to, she towers over this field, and she's an obvious win candidate. Number two is Virginia Joy. Uh, this one has a positive record at Saratoga, but um, really hasn't, uh, ever since she won the Flower Bowl from the front end last year, really hasn't factored uh, terribly well, save for the Sheep's Head Bay at a mile and three eighths. I wonder if maybe uh, this is a little far for her it, it seems to be uh her she hasn't won at a mile and a half but uh i think she's you know third off the layoff uh, with flavian pratt aboard who's riding great on turf uh and she does like the track so uh, i think uh, she's a logical use but uh, i don't see her as a win candidate number three is amazing grace uh this one uh, had a really nice debut in the orchid uh, in North America, the last two haven't been uh, been a little disappointing, I think you'd have to say. Uh, however, she's getting back to a distance that she clearly likes. Uh, two wins and a third out of three starts, and I think that's a big positive here. Uh, Christophe Clement's barn is firing pretty well, and uh, you get Tyler Gaffleon. So I like uh, I like Amazing Grace uh, to be used for sure. Number four is McCulloch. Uh, seems a little light buyer-wise to me. Uh, hasn't gone a mile and a half yet, but being by Frankel, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Does like Saratoga. Uh, has uh, two in-the-money finishes, including a win out of two starts. So uh, we'd have to believe, particularly with these connections, third off the layup. Uh, she definitely is improving, that's for sure. But uh, I don't know that she's got the top end to take this one down with more like Goddess involved, but uh, I think she's a solid use. Uh, Sopran Basilea is uh, is one that seems to be getting better, and you're moving up in distance again. Uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem for her. Uh, her first start in North America was a key race, and White Beam... Uh, you know, just beat in Italian. So that's a pretty good uh, indication of some class here. Uh, we'll have to do better buyer-wise, but I think that's possible. Uh, I think underneath, though, is more than likely. Number six is Elegant Case, and I can't see any reason why this horse is in this race at all. Way outclassed, uh, never run on turf before, and uh, Oxbow, not known as a great turf sire. Uh, she's an obvious toss. Number seven is Vergara. I think this one will be on the lead and hope for the best. I think they're just going to send her. Uh, she is getting better. Uh, the last couple of starts, uh, she's shown improvement. And she uh, she was in that key race with White Beam uh, that Sopran Basilea was in as well. And she did build off it, which is always a positive sign. Uh, I think she'll be okay with the distance being by Noble Mission. Uh, it's possible. I mean, she could wire this field. A lot of things can happen, uh, but she'll she'll be the lone speed, and, and if she's got enough at the end, uh, it's very possible that she could take this one down. You get a really nice price at 12 to 1 as well. So let's take a look at our top five for the Glens Falls. Number one is Warlike Goddess. She's the class of the field. She's back at her preferred distance, third off the layout for Bill Mott. Uh, I think she's a logical win candidate. Number two is Virginia Joy. I think the track's going to pick up her form a little bit. And uh, while I'm not sure about her at a mile and a half, uh, I think that she'll be up near the leaders and will get first jump and uh, has an outside chance. But uh, I think uh, I think the 
being back on Saratoga's uh, course will help her for sure. Number three is Sopran Vasilea. I think this is a horse that's getting back to a distance that she likes and uh, has shown some improvement. So uh, I think that uh, she'll be running late and uh, she's got a puncher's chance at 15 to 1. You know, a lot of things can happen in, in a turf race, but uh, I think underneath is more likely. Number four is Vergara. Uh, you're getting 12 to 1 on the lone speed. Uh, she can get off and set some soft fractions. You never know. A lot of things can happen again in the turf race. So uh, she's got a possibility there. And then number five is Mikulik. Uh, the buyer's a light. I'm not sure that uh, she's really good enough, but uh, uh, I think she's uh, probably going to be improving and uh, will likely factor underneath. So that's the top five for the Glens Falls. And uh, I hope this analysis helps you with your wagering. And, of course, we'll wish you the best of luck, as we always do. Uh, if you do like content like this, you can go on over to Reddit The Wire, where we do have daily selections, full card analysis on the weekends, as well as two-year-old analysis uh, for those tough maiden races. Uh, and if you do like what you see here, of course, please like and subscribe. It does help to keep us going. And uh, we do thank you for coming by and hope to see you again, of course. We'll continue on with our daily stakes plays. And we've got the Whitney weekend coming up. Uh, so we'll have some special postings for that as well. And I'll be talking to you in the near future. So until then, be well.